I think for me, it's a lot of um, guilt around risk taking. And I was raised um, a Jehovah's Witness, which I'm not anymore. And um, it was kind of constant guilt. And then the guilt of leaving and the guilt of losing my family. And just. And I'm sh- I know that there's so much more out there and I know I've got a lot to give. But I'm constantly holding myself back with guilt and r- fear over risk taking, really. Cool. Well, this is a huge topic about, I mean, Jehovah's Witness seems to really epitomize the, um, yeah, the, the uh, such a strong belief in the idea that it does seem to cause a lot of family conflict. Like out of all the religions, and we'll, we'll focus on the religion of Christianity, it seems like Jehovah's Witness specifically, <laughs> specifically, <laughs> creates that tension because if i'm understanding is one of the main beliefs of jehovah's witness that there's a limited amount of people that go to heaven is that I might... right, one hundred forty-four thousand. okay so that uh i can see why that now if parent if like for instance if i truly believe that only one hundred forty-four thousand people go to heaven and davina was not living in a way that i would think would get her into heaven and i was <laughs> then I could yeah. see that creating all kinds of psychological turmoil yeah. for people. Yeah, I've watched people who, they're, they're married and they're like, one is heaven and one is going to stay on a paradise earth. And that creates, but they have to stay married and they have to love and respect each other. But their whole premise of being together has completely been blown out of, out of the water. So yeah, it's a big deal. It's a strange one. Cool. All right, so, so yeah, I'm just making sure I'm understanding and... Um... So you're thinking oh, you may have a advert, like adver- you're not so comfortable with taking risk because you feel guilty and you think it may have been birthed from your, the way you relate to your parents about being a Jehovah's Witness. Is that what I'm understanding? I think so, yeah. I think um, the constant feelings of guilt that I have are what is what is holding me back from taking risks because I'm too up here I'm too I'm living a bit in the past and and it affects your self-worth I think when you feel guilty about even who you are it's more a case of I feel guilty for who I am because I couldn't be who people needed me to be so I ruined their their picture of how their future and how their paradise was going to be because I couldn't buy into the idea so I feel held back because I feel quite guilty about who I am, if you like. Okay, now my listen. So I'm so I really get on the same page here. Can we? What is the risk? The biggest risk, or the most significant risk that you want to take, that you haven't taken, that you might think that guilt is holding you back from taking? So for me, like I, <clears throat> I feel like I have more. I have gifts to give. So I, I'm artistic and I sing and um, I love to talk to people and learn new things and explore and I'm not in a job that satisfies me which is a a lot of people's situation and I always feel financially that I'm not um, wealthy if you like that I can't take risks because I don't have the money to do so so I I watch other people and I think yeah I just want to quit my job and sell my stuff and disappear (laughs) but I won't take that risk and it's a sense of you will fail because you tend to fail at stuff that you put your mind to. So just sit comfortably, but it isn't comfortable anymore. Okay. Um, okay. And then what is failing? What, what would be failing in this situation? Oh, that's a good question. So for, for me in that situation, it would be that I don't have any money, that I have had an idea of say maybe going having a working visa in Australia and then I don't find work and then I'm stranded and I'm homeless and I have no money and I don't have like the safety net that some people have of coming home to their parents or just things just a terrifying that somehow things are going to go disastrously okay cool (laughs) things are not going to work out (laughs) (laughs) all right so I I'm I judge you to be very smart um very smart and like insightful, almost too smart for your own good. If you've ever heard that saying, like yeah, you've it seems, like yeah, it seems like you've thought so much about all the things that could happen, and maybe the ones that are more compelling to you are the ones you're scared of, which is very natural. 
but I think your ability to start breaking down all these thoughts and this is what's going to happen if this happens and I don't have a time, I don't, I can't go back to someone like other people can't. I'm like, it's, you're right. It is a very mental space to be in. Yeah. Um, I think the, the, maybe a question that would help you reflect on it, on the, your heart, the heart of the matter is like, how much is making this money costing you? It might be costing you more than you becoming homeless. It's stopping me from living, which of course is the ultimate price, I think, because I know there's more, I know there's more. And I fought so hard for more because I took that risk of leaving a religion that was comfortable and a community that was familiar. And I've dived into the unknown, and but it, it hasn't always been easy from then on. Like I was in an abusive relationship, I ended up homeless for a while, I was addicted to drugs. Like, and there's been a lot of stuff, you know, and so I think I don't trust myself almost because I've made a lot of mistakes and poor choices. How do you know that the next choice you make is going to be a wise choice? Okay, so, so yeah, yeah, I think I think that's part of the situation is like you thinking that you've made mistakes and that you've done things yeah. wrong. So first of all, that was probably, that probably, the idea of right and wrong and being a very dualistic perspective of the world of like, oh, I messed up, this is wrong, I'm failing, winning, losing, light, dark, heaven, hell, that split was probably your cultural conditioning, probably yeah. from your parent, whoever, the Jehovah's Witness paradigm that was running strong in your family. So now it seems like you still are a Jehovah's Witness in the sense that you think you've messed up. Like, uh, yes. I don't, I don't think Davina can mess up. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, yeah, I think that's, that, when you said that, you are still, and I think I find that every day because it feels like I'm not who I want, like I can't become who I want to become because it's so, there's such a web in there now of so many other people's ideas and thoughts that have become my own and I don't know which ones are mine and what needs untangling and what doesn't need untangling. Well, this is what... Overthinking, obviously, is a problem. <laughs> yeah, paradoxically, since we have... This is going fast, <laughs> which is cool. We have three minutes left here. Um, paradoxically, I'll give you some ideas that I think are truer than maybe you were given, and that is I don't think you can mess up. Like, I don't think you've failed anything. I don't think you have made any mistakes. I don't think you being addicted to drugs or whatever that story was, was even anything wrong. It's gotten you to this point where you're at right now. You know, Gandhi got to the point where he was at because all the things that led up to that. Jesus got to the point that he got because all the things that led up to it. If they discounted their past and they thought they messed up and wished it had never happened, we would never know who these people are. Yeah. If they were, if they lived their whole life being like, oh, I can't. I can't move forward because I might mess up like I did in the past. No, no. There's like, th this is where we move beyond the dualistic perspective of winning and losing. And I think step into a more holistic perspective of winning and learning. Yes. It's winfinity. We're all, we're here we are, we're alive in, on this miraculous planet Earth in these miraculous human suits. So we win. We, we have won. We have yes. won the game and now it's a celebration. And I do think that the celebration is more fulfilling when we are giving our gift and we are real, we are asking questions like, how much is making this money costing me? Maybe this yeah. money is, co maybe even though I'm making a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars, it's cost, it's the, it, money and value are not the same things. It might be more valuable for you to be homeless or it might be more valuable for you to wander around Australia and be lost until, until you get struck by a passion and act on that rather than doing yeah. what you think is right or and not doing what you think is wrong. I, I think it's time for you to move beyond that. Like, even though you might not identify with Jehovah's Witness, you are to ha you, it does seem like you have been identifying with the main concept of it, which is right and wrong. Yeah. Right people, the 144,000 people that are right go in heaven, everyone else is wrong. Mm. So I wonder if you only think a small, like if 144,000 out of billions of people that have lived or they're living is a very small percentage. So... I'm wondering, maybe you are not literally living like that, but metaphorically you're thinking there's only a small percentage of you that's doing things that are right. Yeah, and a short period of time, I think, as well. You know, that kind of last days idea, this short, short, short period of time you've got to play with. 
and that's I guess this idea of ego versus spirit I'm not sure how much I buy into that but that idea and I, and I do think there is a short idea like the, the real the beyond the living beyond the dualistic perspective might only last a second and that's fine and if, yes. if you're back into the paradigm of like right and wrong for 10 minutes Maybe yes. that's being out of the state of heaven for a little bit. And that's fine because it offers you, oh, this is where I want. I want to go back to this place where I'm living a fulfilling life and celebrating this heavenly exist existence that I find myself in rather than duping myself into thinking I'm doing yeah. something wrong. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And that's 11 yeah. minutes. Look at that. No way. Yeah. <laughs> that, see, it seems, you know, I think when 11 minutes can seem so short. So I do, I think, you know, I think Jehovah's Witness in every religion has deep truth to it, especially when we don't look at it only so literally. There is literal, it's, it's, in my opinion, it's literal, it's metaphorical, it's paradoxical, it's contradictory, and that's what makes it so freaking beautiful. It's like, wow, yeah. oh, the mystery of life, the mystery of religion. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> okay. That's good. It's giving me some things to think about. <laughs> well, maybe it's something not to think about. Maybe it's something, to do. maybe it'll help you forget about things. Yes. And be more yeah, childlike where the kingdom yeah. of heaven exists. Well, thank you for your honesty and your, like I said, your intelligence, your ability to think. I don't think you thinking a lot. Is there anything wrong with that either? You have a very sharp mind. Might as well use it to your advantage and maybe yeah. might as well let it go every once in a while so a new kind of intelligence can arise.